Inspector training video. We're here in Westboro. We got Gene Novak here, state inspector. We got obstructions, we got trees growing. Let's do a quick inspection. If I was the inspector looking at this fire escape, I'm just doing, I'm high as a fire escape inspector. I'll tell you what I found wrong with the fire escape. First of all, we got obstructions, we got a lot of rust. We've got this thing deteriorating into the ground. So all these treads can actually, we can actually just rip these treads. If I was to hammer test, I got rust growing in here. If I was to hammer test, this is where inspectors get hurt. They go up, and sometimes this thing will fall from an... Look at this, Gene. You see, if you look at that side, you think that thing was going to give way if an inspector came down oh, yeah. unknowingly? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's ready to go. So this, this is ready to go. This is a loading dock, so this gets used all the time. So now I'll be careful going up because I'm looking for certain things. I got all this, this grading is supported at the nose. And this grating supported at the back, and this whole rear is all rotted out. So, oh yeah. yeah so yeah. now we've got loads of material coming in here, yeah. and so imagine some poor kid putting out a couch or refrigerator. Yeah. The actual and the rear, rear is gone. Channel, channel. The channel is gone. So if you get underneath there, Viv, and you just you know poke your nose underneath there, yeah, and shoot that thing. Yeah. Channel end is completely gone. Now this is taking couches, refrigerators, whatever it may be. Yeah. It's missing its rail here, and a lot of times this is a chain rail. That's right. Yeah. So usually, uh, if any kids get over here playing around, they could fall. So it's usually missing a, a passing rail. Look at the supports into the ground, how they're rotting, because it, uh, it's just cemented into the ground, as opposed to being sitting on a, on, a, on a pillar. That's another problem there. There's some welds here that I can't verify, but as soon as I put a bolt through here, I can verify this weld here by putting a couple of bolts in here. So whenever you get welds, I, ver I basically nullify the weld by putting in bolts. Look at all this rust growing in here. Boy. Okay. That really shows you how much it will push out. Yeah, I mean, it'll that, push out. A quarter inch will go to one inch. Wow. Now, if I'm going to go up... Another obstruction. A tree. Yeah, another tree. Though. It's a very popular thing to have trees. A lot of people let vines grow. These vines will take a, a fire escape over in no time. Now, this whole... This whole fire escape is welded. It looks like some, they used to have treads here and they came in and took the treads out and put in new ones. Did you see these rusty tears coming down? I do. That's an indication that whoever welded these, and they usually weld the nose and the back, of a piece yeah. in the back. The water gets in from above and it starts eating the trees. So even though basically the weld looks good from the outside, there's usually only a quarter of them uh, percent left when you step on it and the weld gives way. Let me see if I can find one that's ready to give on the way up. And that's on this side. This, if you look up straight up here, you're gonna see oh, yeah. quite a bit. That's it, that's the one that's in there. Okay, so all these rusty tears are indicators that water's coming in from above. The next couple of bed. Okay, now as you can see, I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna do the grading up here. Yeah. So, all this fire escape was kind of put together. So this, all these brackets, and all these connectors here. See, the only way I can guarantee this weld, if it's not a rust build, all I have to do to not weld this, and you can't because of the EPA requirements, you can't weld on fire escape. As soon as I put in two structural bolts here, two structural bolts there, then I seal this up with silicone. All right, I'm going to But she's legged to the ground, so that's just, she's just pulling out because freezing thaw gets in here. Water gets in here, freezing thaw keeps pulling, but it's, it's, uh, it's a lag screw into an anchor into the wall. You need the full paint job because it hasn't seen paint. And it's an all welded fire escape, so a lot of times, Gene, see this, see this connection right here? All these connections to avoid a uh, verification process. As soon as I draw some holes through them, I got this stringer welded to this thing. As soon as I put an angle clip in here, put two bolts in it, I've eliminated the need for what could be a very good weld. But because I don't want to spend any money x-raying it, it's cheaper to put a just to put a, um, a bolt through with a clip. So this one here would take a bolt. This one here would take a bolt. Otherwise, verify that weld. So as you start coming down, you can see that the worst part of this fire escape is down here. That's right. 
to the point that there's even a dip in the grading because there's some heavy load coming in and out. Is this considered a life safety issue in your opinion? Um, Knowing the traffic that comes through here, yes, yes. is somebody going to get hurt with a refrigerator loading your fridge? Absolutely. Actually, and it's never, the, it's never the owner. It's always Joe, helper. Now, even these treads, as you can see, the day that you can start grabbing steel that is welded and connected, if you want, you can... You're not supposed to do this with steel. I mean, the only thing fighting me is this tree. It's not the steel anymore. And, and this is a good point. Even though it's the, the final tread, look at rusted for the connector. And that's the stringer, it's all rotted. Okay, so that's the power of rust left unchecked. Now, the cement issue on the ground, the bulges. Now, let me give you an answer right here. What we tell the clients to do, there's snow to accumulate here. You clean this up, you're gonna find a foundation of some kind. We got a sauna tube, about 12 inches. A piece of sauna tube, rip it in half, do this sit it on top of the old sauna. You bring it up six to 12 inches above grade. Now, this thing is already in the cement. It's already wrong. Because you're not supposed to put steel or wood inside cement. The only code doesn't allow. I'm already, in the, I'm already too far gone on this one. But if I raise this eight to 12 inches of cement, sauna wrapped around, I drill some holes, put a couple of rebars in the, in the old cement to sort of marry the two together. Prior to that, I grab roofing tar and I goop with my hands and a glove. I goop this whole thing up to 12 inches with tar. Then I wrap it in cement and then I fill it with about six inches so that whenever there's snow, more than six inches of snow is what's gonna be needed. But it's tarred 12 inches so that whenever there's snow accumulating down here, it's sitting on top of tar. And then the last thing I put on this, when there's, when the, there's a new piece of cement, sano, I put in a clip that sits on top of the sauna, bolted here and sitting so that as this rots, and this will rot, what's inside will rot away, the new clip on top is the new foot. What's wrong is sitting inside, but I can't do anything about it because they already built it wrong. But there's things you can do with, the, with, the, with that. Scrape and paint, older than 1978, so EPA renovators license is required. You need a permit to pull. You can't uh, do any work on this far, no welding allowed. So it's all bolted, so I can I can secure every one of these treads by coming here and putting in two bolts. I drill two three eighths holes. Do I have to guarantee these welds anymore? No. As soon as I put in the two bolts, I've nullified the weld. I still will try to seal it on top so water doesn't get in there anymore. 50 year silicone is a great thing to have. Actually, we're actually missing the behind. Yeah. Yeah. So it's an unsupported piece of grading. There you go. And you can actually. Yeah, we got work to do here. Yeah. We so start these are Typing. these are the these are the kind of things because you get very few of these fire escapes are kind of whipped into a shape like this one. This is kind of brought here, and some guy had pieces, and he and he created this fire escape system. Most fire escapes, believe it or not, are built to standard, built to code. This every now and then there's one that's shoehorned in, and this is one of those that is kind of shoehorned in. But that's all you have to worry about is do do they know what to look for? Do they know what to expect? How do you deal with a welded fire escape versus a bolted fire escape? and all the codes associated. But if you have a permit that you pull and you are the one overseeing that to make sure that the, the, the vendor who's doing the work is correct, and then there's the, the confidence test, this is the sign off. Meaning, if I'm gonna oversee this job, the, vet, the engineer has to oversee. So there's three to five visits required by an engineer. So that if he's watching this and he's gonna be signing, he can't do an initial inspection and a final inspection six months from now. He must schedule and get paid for by the owner an initial inspection review the vendor is starting to do the work. He must show up when the vendor is working, watch the job, make sure it's going according to his standard, come in the middle of the job, come in the three quarters of the job, and then do a final. Because he's signing off on a guarantee. Yeah, on a certification. Yeah,